All right, so first up, we have a revision. We do. We're going to see a lot of revisions in the coming months because if I can't get parts, I have to revise the board, and sometimes I kind of do a little bit more revision because, like, I'm in there, might as well fix a couple other things. Uh, so this is the USB Ultimate GS, uh, sorry, USB Ultimate GPS, a lot of TLAs in there. Uh, this is a USB-friendly version of our Ultimate GPS board, a very popular um, GNS, uh, which allows you to uh, get data from the sky to get the exact time um, and also your exact location. Handy for all sorts of purposes. Um, this one has both the built-in antenna and also you can uh, connect an external antenna so you can use it indoors, have the antenna outside. Uh, so this revision, uh, what we did is we changed the CP2104 chip for a CP2102N. Shouldn't affect anything. The driver is the same. Functionality is the same. And while we were at it, we also changed the micro B to a USB-C. Why not? Also changed a couple parts to uh, 0603 instead of 0805. But otherwise, the layout's the same. The shape's the same. Functionality is identical. Um, you'll just want a USB-C cable. We're kind of moving stuff to USB-C because that's the future, or it's the, it's the present, and the micro USB is in the past. Okay, next up. Uh, next up, this is a slightly bigger revision. This is the Feather ESP32 S2 with BME uh, 280 sensor. Um, so this was very popular, and then after I released it, I realized that uh, I had made a decision with the I squared C pull up resistors that ended up causing uh, higher power draw during deep sleep mode um, if you were using sensors on the QT port. Um, and so I was like, well, you know, I should revise this. And I've also learned a little bit more about uh, low power stuff. So instead of a transistor to switch on and off the power to the QT port, I've actually just thrown on another LDO. So there's uh, two um, low dropout regulators, one for the NeoPixel and I2C, one for the main board. And that means you can easily cut power to the NeoPixel and I2C. So even if you have stuff plugged into the QT port, uh, you'll be able to get that 70 microamp um, low power draw in deep sleep. And um, we're also going to have the version without the BME 280 um, released into the store soon, but we wanted to start with this version. So just uh, showing a little quick demo, because I don't think I showed this demo before. Oh, this was this was set up for the toodle loop. Hold on. A second, let me. I got to get my inclinometer so I can get this nice and straight. Uh, so this is just showing that um, here I've got the temperature, humidity, and pressure sensor. Uh, I also got a battery monitor. Oh, there's no battery installed. So that's why it's like there's no battery. But um, if the battery was installed, shall I find one? Hold on. One moment. One second. Let me just uh, I want to reset this completely. Okay. So uh, now the battery voltage is more correct. So, um, and you can see it's running off a battery. So uh, there's a LiPo monitor, which gives you percentage and uh, voltage. It's a nice little um, uh, I squared C monitor. Uh, the ESP32 S2 is a native USB um, version of the ESP32. It's a single core, 10 silica, 240 megahertz, Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth support uh, at all in it. Um, the S3 has BLE and we'll, we'll come out with that later. However, it does have four megabytes of flash and two megabytes of PSRAM, which is super handy if you need uh, large buffers. Um, so the big change really was just, again, that little uh, LDO over here um, just got updated so it can be uh, lower power in low power mode. Um, so the guide will be updated with the new schematic, but otherwise it's um, very functionally similar um, to the polarity of how to turn on and off the power for the QT port did change. We're going to have a little bit of chunk of code that no matter which version you have, it'll turn it on or off uh, as desired. So um, that's it. That's the update okay. to the S2. Next up. Next up, we have a, a cute uh, kind of round panel mount, um, 3.5 millimeter uh, stereo adapter. Uh, we had a smaller one. Um, we actually got sent these by accident, but they were so cute. We're like, we'll just put them in the store. Um, these are really easy to mount if you don't want to cut a square hole or, or you want, you know, you have a rough edges. Um, it's, it's a very large flanged connector. It hides, um, you know, any burrs in the hole quite, uh, quite nicely. And so we like these for, for panel mounting um, because uh, even somebody with just a simple hole saw um, can cut it into almost any material. 
Okay, and then the start of the show tonight, besides you, Lady, our team, our customers, our community, and the Adafruit staff that's on it, running things behind the scenes tonight is? This is the uh, LiPo BFF, mostly because I couldn't come up with a better name in time. So this is sort of like a shield or a, a wing or um, a hat for uh, cutie pies. So, um, you know, we wanted to make a couple add-ons. One common add-on that people uh, wanted was the ability to, uh, especially for the Wi-Fi boards, to have a battery plug in and have the battery charge. We didn't have enough space on the cutie pie to add charging circuitry or a LiPo connector. Um, but this little uh, BFF solders onto the back and kind of gives you a lot of functionality. So there's uh, the battery port, of course. You can use any 200 milliamp hour battery or larger. There's an on-off switch. Um, let's go to the, uh, let's go here. There's an on-off switch. Um, so, you know, if, you, if you're portable, you don't have to unplug the battery to turn it on or off. Um, there is, uh, the, the voltage from the battery is then dioded back into the five volt pin because there isn't like a separate battery in on, um, the cutie pie or the, the shell that it's based off of. Um, and there's a, uh, voltage divider on A2, which you can cut this little jumper if you want to cut the voltage divider and the voltage divider, um, lets you, um, monitor the voltage on the five volt pin not the battery of the five volt pin, which actually has a bit of a side effect that it lets you determine roughly whether uh, the board is being charged or is running off of the battery. Because you can, if the, if the voltage on the five volt pin is above about 4.2 volts, it's the five volt power coming in from USB. If it's below 4.2 volts, it's most likely running off of the LiPo battery. Um, so I've got the little demo, although I don't know if I... I might have reprogrammed this board by accident. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, but we have the video, so show yeah, the video. Let's see because, the video. So um, you can see, turn it off, turn it on. It's running off a of lipo. Plug it in. It knows it's running off of USB. Unplug USB. It knows it's running off of lipo okay, again. That's smart. Yeah. So I got okay. the demo down to six seconds, um, but then I was messing with it. Is new product. <laughs>